What's up guys, this is Kyle from Wax Museum. I got a couple pieces of mail from today that I want to show you real quick. Uh, this one I already opened, but I wanted to show it to you for a specific reason because this was shipped using the standard envelope program through eBay, which um, is like a cheaper alternative to bubble mailers. And every time I've received a relic card, like a jersey or a patch through this program, it's been bent up. And um, I cringe every time I see that it's been shipped in one of those. Well, this seller tried something different to prevent that. They taped up a popsicle stick to the back. So now I don't know if that's effective, but I at least wanted to show it to you before I opened the, took the card out of here and, and, and found out. But uh, I thought that was a, an interesting, at least attempt at a solution. Now we'll see here if it actually uh, arrived in good condition or not. Um, the big thing to look at, no, I, I don't think it did. Um, it, anytime there's pressure, you can see, if you look around, and this might, for all I know, this might have happened beforehand, but I imagine it was in transit. Um, you can see that the pressure around that patch piece, I'll put that, I'll see if I can change this view here, but yeah, the pressure pushes that in, even if you got something on the other side, so... I don't know if that happened during transit or not. It's it's a rare enough card that I'll probably um, either keep it or flip it anyway and just disclose that, hey, you know, that's that's part of the situation. So anyway, that's not the main reason why I wanted to show you this. Uh, the main reason was because I actually found a decent lot. I haven't had a chance to do much lot hunting lately, but I found this lot, um, scooped it up. I think it was about 30 bucks, a little cheaper than that even. Um, now the thing about this lot is that it was a player lot and usually I stay away from player lots. The reason I stay away from player lots is I just assume that collectors of the player have already, um, have already looked in the lot to see if there's anything in there they want or not. They've already, you know, taken all the good stuff. Well, this one I saw pretty soon after it was listed. So I decided I would actually look through it and see what was in there. <laughs> All right, so here you go. Um, some interesting things in here and some signed cards, not uh, necessarily certified autographs, but aftermarket autographs. Um, and I see the the one card I really want here is the second one. That's, so I'm going to move it to the bottom. Um, but we have, here's a signed card. It is smudged at the bottom. I didn't buy this for the signatures, though. And these signatures look good to me, by the way. Um, so I have faith that they are good autographs. So... A lot of signed cards. That's pretty cool. That Wingman insert. Uh, Team Skybox. That's a good looking card as well. Uh, we got an Ovation card. Uh, an Encore rookie. So nothing, you know, these aren't anything crazy. Right, you got your diamond points. Nothing crazy here. Um, another si Silver Auto. And I always like this Jam City insert set, even though they're not worth a lot. So um, that one I'll probably keep for the PC. Uh, a few of these cards I'll keep for the PC, but here's the one that stood out to me. This is a 1998-99 Metal Universe Lynchpins insert, and this is a 10-card set, um, and a lot of big names in it. I mean, for the whole set, there's really only a couple duds in it, and I would consider Antoine Walker a dud. I'm sorry to all the Walker people out there. Keith Van Horn is is the other one. The rest of the players are all pretty solid. Um but it, I want you to look at this card. These were one in every 360 packs. And I want you to look at just the craftsmanship of this card. Because this is something you don't see anymore. This is why, you know, like the Jordans and some of the bigger names are very, very valuable. But you can see there are, um, you know, maybe you can see my hand behind it. There are little pins that are punched out. And this one looks pretty clean. There are little pins that are punched out. Uh, a very intricate punch out. We don't see that a lot anymore. And there were several from that era that were pretty cool. Another one would have uh, been the prime twine inserts that even though they're numbered to 500, they're very hard to come by. Uh, and they're very well sought after too. And, and they usually came out of the pack pretty clean. They weren't creased. You know, you'd think with a lot of these punch outs that there'd be creases. That one still looks very clean and a lot of them were. So kudos to Fleer uh, and Skybox for making that happen. Now, um, we haven't seen a lot of punch-outs in the Panini era, 
and the majority of them that we have seen, maybe even all of them, but I would say the majority came from Panini Innovation, but it's just not the same level as this. And I know I've seen some that had big stars punched in them. Um, this is the only one I had on hand to show you. This is from Innovation. It's kind of cool. I mean, we don't see stuff like this anymore. Uh, I did have a friend, though, Sholi. You guys have heard him on the podcast. He pointed out to me that all of these on all of this set right here, it's the it's yellowed in there. I don't know if it's the card stock. I guess it's the card stock, but it makes it look yellowed. So uh, makes it look yellow around the edges there. So you know, it is what it is. That's kind of what Panini's done as far as punch outs go. But Skybox took that to an entirely different level. So here, I'm very happy to find this in a lot. It's not super valuable. Walker Raw is probably around seventy dollars. I got the lot for about 30 so it's still a great deal. Um, but just the odds of finding a card that is that rare and that hard to get to begin with, it's a good feeling when you track one of those down. And that's always my goal is to track down rare cards. So there you have it. Um, new episodes of the podcast that come out every Thursday. Don't forget that. And then as always, thank you for watching.